It's our story. Pat Puckett, Atlanta, Georgia. Well, I, th I think that we still have a tremendous amount of work to do on this whole question of empowerment. Because, you know, when you think about other civil rights movements, the church is a, what brought a lot of black people together. So it was a place for people to come together and start thinking about freedom and independence and uh, civil rights and so forth. And people with disabilities, other than special education classrooms, have not had, or, or nursing homes, have not had a lot of opportunities to gather. And so Centers for Independent Living are really the first place that I can think of in our history that gave people with disabilities a place to gather that was of their own choosing, I guess, is a, an important element there, too. And so I think that finding especially young people with disabilities and bringing them along, so to speak, um, is, uh, is a challenge of Centers for Independent Living. There, there's a lot of us that are out there that are in our mid-50s and, you know, we, we need to be bringing on some younger folks to, and, and teaching them what all this is like. Now, part of the problem is that an awful lot of young people with disabilities don't particularly want to hang out with other folks with disabilities because they're still trying to pass, you know, as non-disabled. And, um, and so I think there's always this fine line between um, recognizing that you have some common work with your brothers and sisters who have disabilities, while at the same time also recognizing that a good deal of mainstream power and economic resources and so forth you don't find in the disability community. So if you want to run for office and if you want to have a really good job and all those things, you, you need to hang out with folks that are not uh, the counterculture of any kind, whether it's disabled people or um, any other uh, powerless minority, whatever it might be. So I think Centers for Independent Living do offer the, the opportunity for, for younger people to learn something and places of, of people's choosing to get together to talk about strategy. Um, it, it's just, it's always a journey. It just always takes a lot longer than you think it should. I mean, for example, when we launched the whole thing, the whole um, uh, community-based attendant services initiative, you know, when, when the ADA passed and transportation became fait accompli, and we shifted our efforts toward personal assistance services or attendant care, I predicted at the time that that would be a 25-year battle. We're entering year 10. And we still do not have a piece of legislation that clearly says home and community-based services is what is to be. We're still demonstrating, we're still studying, we're still uh, doing all of those things other than changing the way it works. So. I don't know if we'll make it in, in 25 years or not, but, but nevertheless, I, I think that any fundamental structural change like that one is a minimum of two decades. So we'll see if I'm right. The It's Our Story Project is a national effort to make disability history public and accessible. Visit us at www.itsourstory.org or on the It's Our Story Project YouTube channel.